A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back in 2025. And today I would like to combine two of my most favorite types of mathematics questions ever into one nice exercise that you can solve for yourself, try to solve and leave in the comments down below what you got. But before we get to that, why not consider becoming a patron for this channel? It really helps support the channel in some kind of way and it just motivates me to keep making videos. So please check out Patreon, um, link down there in the description. Now we are going to dive right in. Now what's the question exactly? We have that a quadratic function with its maximum at 04 and the zero at x not being equal to negative 4 encloses an axis parallel rectangle, just like in the sketch. Right here we have our quadratic function, that's a parabola, it has a maximum and it encloses a rectangle. The rectangle is going to touch just like a circumference our um, Per parabola exactly at the upper corners and also the rectangle is bounded by the x-axis. Now here's our question. Find the side lengths of the rectangle for which the area of the rectangle is maximized. And that is just amazing. This right here is an optimization problem and it's not as easy as saying well the maximum area is when you have a square. Spoiler alert, this is not going to be the case here. <laughs> and also we have reconstruction of functions equations. Two of my most favorite things ever in mathematics has always been since school days and also through university. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. Try it out for yourself and then keep watching the video once you put your solution down there in the comments below. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually get ourselves the formula for our parabola. And we are going to go at it from a calculus perspective. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write out what a quadratic function looks like in general. Well, it always looks like this, f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And now we can just plug our conditions in. What conditions do we have? Let's start over here. So we have maximum at 0 and 4, meaning if we just plug this point into our function, we are going to get that f of 0 is exactly 4. And this is, well, if you plug zero into our axis, those are going to vanish, leaving us just with c. So our y-intercept of our parabola is 4, which is not very surprising if you just take a look at the coordinates of the maximum. So we can actually get to our sketch a tiny little bit and put another line into here, which represents the y-axis. And this parabola is exactly symmetric to our y-axis. So meaning our rectangle is also going to be something symmetric. Now, next, we are going to take a look at the calculus perspective of a maximum, where the maximum is exactly where the slope of the tangent line is zero. Meaning if we were to differentiate our function and put our x value in exactly at that x value where the maximum is, the, the local maximum, we have a slope of zero. Okay, that means in calculus terms, and I think that's called the first derivative test, I'm not certain about that, we get f prime at the spot x being equal to zero. It must be equal to zero, and if we were to differentiate our function f of x, this gives us 2ax plus b, but this first term is going to vanish because of the condition x being equal to zero, giving us overall that this is just b. And this is not surprising at all that b is also going to vanish in our equation because this right here is a par parabola which is symmetric to the y-axis, meaning it's not shifted to the left or right, so this part is going to vanish overall. So this is what our parabola looks like right now. The last thing we need to do is we need to find out a. And qualitatively speaking, we know that a must be negative because it's open in the downwards y direction. But we can calculate it obviously because we still have one condition left, namely that the zero or one zero of the parabola, this should be this one right here, is located at negative four. Meaning overall what we can do is we can just plug our condition for the zero of a function in, namely exactly at this point, negative four, we are going to get zero out. If we plug negative four into here, we are going to get a times negative four squared, which is 16a, and then plus four. And now it becomes pretty obvious, if we were to subtract four, we are going to get that 16a, 
is equal to negative 4. And dividing both sides by 16, we are going to get negative 4 over 16, which is the same as negative a quarter. Meaning overall, our parabola looks something like this. The function f of x is equal to negative 1 quarter x squared plus 4. And this is what we are going to work with now to maximize the area of our rectangle. And for this, we obviously need to get ourselves a function, which is the area. And then we need to differentiate it to get ourselves the maximum of this set function. It's the same logic as the first derivative test. Okay, so let us draw something into our sketch here. Now let's just call this side length right here A and this whole side length right here B. Or we can also break this up a tiny little bit because this thing right here is symmetric on the y-axis. Let's just say that our side length down here is exactly 2b. So those lengths to the left and right are gonna be single b overall. Why am I doing this? Exactly because the line which goes vertically upwards hits exactly our x-axis at x being equal to b. Meaning overall, we can get ourselves a formula for our area. At first being exactly 2 times b times a, because it's just um, base times height. So the area is going to be as follows. a is equal to 2 times b times a. But this right here is a multivariable function right now and that ain't good. That would be a total mess. You can most certainly do it, but it's not fun at all. We want to trace this back to a single variable function. And this is where the next property comes in. Namely, that our parabola encloses our rectangle, meaning it's touching our rectangle exactly at the upper corners. And this is very good, exactly because if we enhance this a tiny little bit, then you are going to notice that exactly at x being equal to b, our height of our rectangle is just going to be the y-coordinate of our parabola. Meaning we can actually get ourselves a substitution, which involves the function of the parabola. Hence, we needed to calculate the function of the parabola at first. Okay, so now this up here is exactly f, of b and we also have b down here but this is already totally sufficient because now our a is with respect to b and also b is obviously with respect to b making our total area function with respect to b too so this right here is the same as 2 times b times f of b and what is f of b f of b is negative 1 quarter b squared plus 4 so this right here is now a function a with respect to b being equal to 2 times b times negative 1 quarter b squared plus 4. And now we can just go for the usual business of differentiating this and just finding stuff out like the side length b once it's maximized. So now we can just distribute everything into everything. This right here turns into negative 1 half b cubed plus 8 times b. And now we are going to differentiate our area function. Now a prime with respect to b is the same as we track the 3 to the front, giving us negative 3 over 2 times b squared plus 8. And since we want to find out the local maximum of this area function to maximize the area overall, we set this equal to 0. It's the same logic as before. Now we can solve this equation right here. And that's fairly easy. We can add 3 over 2 b squared on both sides. Now we get um, 3 over 2 b squared is equal to 8. Now we can multiply both sides by 2 over 3, giving us overall that b squared is equal to, now this is going to give us 16 over 3. And now by taking the square root, it must be the positive one, because remember b is a positive side length. You can also take the absolute value, that, that's also totally fine. So taking the square root, we are going to get the square root of 16 over 3 and the square root of 16 is 4. So b must be equal to 4 divided by the square root of 3. Meaning overall that the side length, if everything is maximized, of our rectangle down here, our 
space is going to be two times b, so it's going to be eight over square root of three. But we still don't know if it's maximized or not. We need to find out if this right here um, corresponds to maximum. Meaning we are going to do the second derivative test, I think it's called. We are going to take the second derivative of our area function, which is going to result in negative. Okay, now we are going to get um, two to the front, negative three times b. And now we must plug b in. If we plug the value for b in, we are going to get that a double prime of four over the square root of three. It's gonna be negative three times four over the square root of three. And this right here is obviously less than zero. We don't need to calculate anything more. It's totally sufficient to find out that this right here is less than zero. And if this right here is less than zero, then at b being equal to four, over square root of three, this corresponds to maximum. Meaning our area function is indeed maximized once b is equal to four over the square root of three. Now, our rectangle is gonna have the base of eight divided by square root of three. Now, what is the height going to be? The height is going to be, well, f of b. This is what we have found out. So let us calculate f of b real quick. It's gonna be. Okay, if we plug it in, we are going to get negative quarter. Now we are going to get x squared. x squared is the same as b squared in our case. So this is going to give us times 16 over 3 and then plus 4. Now 16 and a quarter is going to cancel out to being just a 4. So we are going to get 4 minus 4 over 3, which is the same as... Um, this is 12, so um, 8 over 3. It shall be, I suppose. This right here is going to be 8 over 3. And you might notice that indeed this right here is not a square. It is indeed a rectangle and its area is maximized if we have exactly those two side lengths. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, then make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor, Brain, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Optimization problems are amazing. They pop up in mathematics, also in physics when it comes to Lagrangian mechanics, for example, and also engineering all the time. Real life is about optimization and making things work, but you can get away with the mathematics only. Sometimes you need sketches and visualizations to get a better grasp of the topic at hand. And this is where Brilliant comes in totally clutch. With their nearly uncountably infinite amount of online courses in mathematics, physics, computer sciences, all topics STEM that you can quite possibly think of. They prepare you for all real life situations and also abstract situations that you can possibly think of. Especially dear to my heart are their geometry courses and also their probability courses. Their probability courses, especially on Markov chains, really got me through a hard time at university. Those were really annoying, stochastics is nice, and they really helped me out with their visualizations to give myself a better understanding of what I'm dealing with there actually. And the geometry course is something that's really dear to my heart because I just love showing this each and every year to my students, especially when it comes to the visual proofs. And this is the really strong side of Brilliant. Implementing visualizations and graphics, things that you can play around with with your own two hands in their online courses. They have on the one hand this very abstract side, this very formal side that you find in university, but on the other side, they use all those visualizations and little nifty things to just give you a way better understanding of what you're dealing with in no time at all. It seriously helps a lot and I just love their online learning concept. And you should try it out for yourself. You don't need to take my word for it, seriously. You can just use my link at the top of the description, print.org slash randomness, to get a 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness. Seriously, try it out, check out their services. And if this feels like it could turn into a long-term relationship between you and their services, then definitely make sure to use my code entirely or the QR code somewhere up here in the corner to get yourself 20% of an annual premium subscription. It's an amazing deal. There's so much stuff available and they are adding so much new cool stuff on a regular basis. It's just horrendously good. And I love what they deliver to an entire community of very STEM interested and intelligent young people. And you should also jump into the boat and get to learning today. And 
I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, please make sure to also support the channel on Patreon. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. See ya.